Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to be talking about the emergency of an umbilical cord prolapse. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. Check out ninjanerd.org where we have our notes and illustrations for all of these lectures here on YouTube. So an umbilical cord prolapse, what happens when the umbilical cord is displaced through the cervix, meaning baby is not born yet, but all of a sudden there is an umbilical cord coming out. And this is our emergency. This is the, the big thing that you are prepared for as a nurse. You're saying, okay, I have studied this before. I've seen it on the NCLEX. This is a big emergency, but I know what to do. I'm ready and ready for this emergency. So an umbilical cord prolapse, what happens is as that prolapse or as that umbilical cord prolapses through the cervix before baby, there can be compression on the cord. So when that umbilical cord is compressed, we know that the umbilical cord is the lifeline of the baby, right? This is how baby is getting circulation, getting nutrients. So when there is that compression, we have a compromised fetal circulation, which can cause hypoxia to baby, which is no good, right? And we know as a nurse, when we start seeing some issues with uh, babies monitoring, we're gonna say, hmm, what's going on? So what does our assessment look like? First, we are going to be assessing mom and we look down there, all of a sudden we see a visible or palpable umbilical cord. We're gonna say, uh, okay, uh-oh, this is an emergency. Stay calm, I know what to do. But you may not be assessing down there and you may not visibly see it, the cord outside of mom, but it might still be within the cervix vaginal canal and there might still be some compression on that cord. And that's gonna show up in our fetal heart rate on the uh, cardiotocography. So we're gonna either have some variable or we're gonna have some prolonged decelerations. And that's gonna indicate to us there is some sort of compression, right, on the cord. Some sort of compression that is going on and it's causing baby some hypoxia. And then there also might be moments where mom says, you know, baby's moving a lot and then all of a sudden baby's not moving a lot. So something else is going on. So we got this cord prolapse and we gotta think, well, why does this occur and how could it have occurred? There's a couple risk factors we need to go over. First, it could be the rupture of membranes. As the membrane was ruptured, the gush of fluid just kind of pushed the umbilical cord out through the, the presenting part of mom. There also might be an abnormal fetal position. So we talked about some fetal positions in our Leopold Maneuvers video, but if baby is laying transverse, where there's a lot of uh, space down below and head's not engaged down in our pelvis, that is going to allow that fluid, when it does gush, pull that umbilical cord out. There's also that unstable lie, where they're not engaged, right? We just said that. The small gestational age, so if baby is smaller than what we, what we would like, if baby's a little smaller, it can slip right around, the umbilical cord slips right around baby, and then also becomes prolapse. Also, if the umbilical cord is super long, right? All this, this umbilical cord, there's just so much umbilical cord that a little bit is going to prolapse out. Multi-fetal pregnancy, there's a lot of umbilical cords that could also lead for us to have a prolapse. And then the polyhydramnios with a lot of fluid that's gonna cause that big gush, right? And then this emergency, we have to stay cool, calm, and collected because we are dealing with mom. Mom might be looking right at you like, what's going on? And you're gonna say, I've seen this before, I know what to do. The first thing you're gonna do is call for assistance. Don't leave the patient, okay? And then you're gonna put on your sterile gloves and you're gonna insert the two fingers into the vagina to remove all the pressure off of the cord. And that's it. You're removing all the pressure off the cord and you're not gonna remove it. So that means as you called for help and all those people start coming into the room to help out, they're gonna be doing everything else and you're just gonna be sitting there making sure all that compression is off of the cord at that moment. If they are deciding that mom's gotta to go to the cesarean section, you're taking her to the OR, you're right on that bed with her and you're getting rolled in until they get into the OR. So if you aren't the person that is holding compression off of the cord, but you do respond to this, there's other things that need to be done. We need to make sure that there's oxygen via face mask, eight to 10 liters that we can give to mom, right? Because baby's gonna have hypoxia, so we wanna make sure we're flooding mom with some oxygen to hopefully give baby some oxygen. We also might wanna administer our tocolytic. We can hopefully, if we can, reposition mom, so put her in a knees to chest position or a transdellenberg or even get to a side lying position. But again, we aren't removing our hand at all. That's a big NCLEX right, eight NCLEX trick right there. Don't, don't remove the, your hand. You also wanna apply a warm, sterile, saline soaked gauze, right? We wanna make sure that we're keeping the umbilical cord uh, dilated and nice and open because we wanna make sure we can still perfuse to baby as much as we can. So that sterile, warm, soaked gauze is gonna allow for that vasodilation. 
And then if mom is dilated and ready to push, then we're going to push. But if not, and we got to take that ride to the OR to get a cesarean section, then that's the route we're going to have to go for this. But the whole point I want you to get from this video is it's something that rarely happens, but it can happen. And you just got to stay calm and know what you need to do. And that the two most important things is to not leave the patient while you're calling for assistance and then immediately get the pressure off the cord with those sterile gloves. Okay, those sterile gloves. And that's it, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we talked about the umbilical cord prolapse. I hope this made sense. I hope you liked it. And as always, until next time.